welcome everybody to another exciting episode of the four o'clock game and happy fourth of july to you all ladies and gentlemen and i hope you all enjoy you had a great time and you know summer is already officially here and of course the four o'clock game is going to wrap up with the 34 days of crabby games and today we're going to conclude the four o'clock games 34 days of crabby games with one last game and this game was came to us in 1982 and this game was released for the Atari VCS and this game was made by a company called Atari and you know what the game is called this is ET as you know ET is considered as one of the worst Atari 2600 game of all time or the Atari VCS game of all time if you were to consider if you if I say Atari 2600 or Atari VCS, this is the this is absolutely no exception to the rule. This is indeed the worst game to close out the four o'clock games, 34 days of crappy games. So before we're gonna start this game right now, I just wanted to say this one. I am going to see the fireworks tonight, and I know I would look forward to go see it. And if you're if you're in the New York area, you're looking forward to go see the New York. To see the Macy's Fourth of July fireworks. Yep, I heard it. it's coming to the East River once again, and they're going to be lighting up the fireworks tonight. And uh, as the four o'clock game, thirty-four days of crappy games concludes with this game. So, I just want to tell you one thing: when you go out tonight, after you finish watching this, we'll go out to see the fireworks, and I hope you all enjoy this as well. So, just to keep an eye on for it. So later tonight, so stay tuned. To this uh, this video and I will tell you all about it okay back to the game this is the game that I actually I used to play this game a lot when I was a kid and actually after all these years that this is one of my first memories of frustrating the controls are absolutely horrible and dreadful I know a lot of people reviewed this game in the past and this is the game that can be can be found in the upcoming AVGN movie, you know, Angry Video Game Dinner, the movie. Yep, that's the game that James is going to talk about in in the upcoming AVGN movie that is going to be making up very soon. And this comes out very soon, by probably later this year or next year, whatever. Here's the back, and it says here, "Ouch, ET is lost on Earth." And wants to get home and help him build an inter interplanetary telephone to call in assistance before his energy runs out. But beware of governing agents and curious scientists will, which, who will sap E.T.'s precious energy before it reaches his goal. Yep, this is the worst one I ever played. Look at the graphics. They look bad. The controls are bad, and the gameplay was bad. And that uh, that god awful ET music was played in the in the title screen. That is the stupidest title music ever in a game. And I I cannot give this thing. It says, look at this. The, this cartridge can only be used with the Atari 200 series systems. And so the game was made in 1982, and uh, I think this was released for the Atari VCS. And this is actually, this game took six weeks to develop. You know, it was made by a couple, the guy named Howard Scott Warshaw. He was the guy who was behind uh, Yars Revenge. He made a game in the Freighters of the Lost Ark for the Atari before this game was released. And since, since E.T. was not very popular for the Atari standards... Um, Howard Scott Walshaw, they just bought them because Atari bought the rights to the uh, universe from Steven Spielberg to produce this game. And of course, the Walshaw was, was involved in the project because um, this, is what the hit, the st my, this is what the story goes. Howard Scott Walshaw was a great programmer for, for, these, for Atari at the time. He went on, the, yeah, he, he spoke to Steven Spielberg. He went on to develop a game. You know, let's put the let's put the game together. And after that, it took six weeks to complete the game. And then what happens is it took six weeks to develop and completed the game. Of course, it never did. It never happened. It doesn't do good. 
And by the time the, this game was released around Christmas 1982, during the holiday season, it was a commercial flop. But it just it doesn't sell well because it's it the second worst game I think was Pac-Man for Atari, which I did which I already did this thing back in on, on a previous episode when I did the uh, the Pac-Man Atari game, the Atari version of Pac-Man, which is a, a such a dreadful game. It's not very good at all. But this game is so bad. It's got some terrible gameplay and controls. You know, I think I see a lot of people review this game in the during the past few years on YouTube. And this is so horrible, but it is a piece of garbage. And I can't believe I cannot stand this game. And this is the last in the 20 and this is the last of the 30 40 days of crappy games. If I can try to do this right after this game is done, this needs to ground this game and even get executed. So now let's go to the gameplay. So enough said. Here we go. This is ET for the Atari VCS. Now let's go to the game and see what happens. As Jackie Gleason would say, and away we go. All right. This is the last game for the evening, for this 4th of July weekend. And you know what? You know, as we celebrate the 4th of July, let's close out this game. And we're going to start with the game called E.T. for the Atari 2600. It's the last game of the 34 days of crappy games. And you know, as you probably heard, uh, if you haven't seen this one, but this, this game will be part of the new AVGN movie, which will be coming out very soon. I know, I've heard the news about the AVGN movie has that been after a long awaited make yeah, it's been a long time in the making, of course. I hope this game will be in the AVGN movie. And I know I've been watching this inside first look at the at the movie. That I hope they'll be end up coming very soon. So I hope you'll enjoy it. So now let's get on with this game, shall we? And, uh, this game begins. And, yo... Alright. Yeah, you, you, the object is to collect... Oh, yeah, this is stupid. The controls look absolutely horrible. It's worse than, uh, than this. So... And, you know, this is, this is kind of odd. You can see, you can, this thing you have to navigate. The controls you have to say, it's so bad. It's probably the worst game ever made. You know, this game was released for 1982. And, uh, you had to and you have to go through those holes. That's right, you have to watch for those holes. If you miss one gap, you end up falling down. It's not good. It is not very good if you, if you can count on it's a game. Right now, I have to see there's no FBI agents or... Yeah, I tried the third skill of the level because you know why? I know, you have to... You know, the first one you have to avoid is the FBI agents. And, uh, you know, the object is to... Um, you know, there are two main characters in the game, you know, that you have to avoid. FBI agents or the scientist. You know, the science will take you to the... The lab or something or something like that and you can tell you here's the arrows you tw tell you which way to teleport it and of course the green dot means you you have to collect Reese's pieces for well, a little thing what they call the Reese's pieces that's an advertising gimmick as far as I'm concerned I think it's the worst thing in my opinion and yeah, you can't go to the mothership yet until after you collect the phone. That's, uh, you gotta watch out for where you fall. And you have to watch out for the scoring points or something. If you run out of energy, you, you'll have Elliot to regain your health. And yeah, you fell off into one inch of a gap. I 
Then yeah, you had to watch out for those gaps. Well, yeah, you had to you have to fall down. You know what? I don't like getting fell into the pits. That's right. You fell into the pits. You had to regain your health. You have to wait for Elliot to come. That's right. You have to just you have to hit the button. You have to wait for Elliot to come, and you can take away this thing. You can uh, you have to restart this from. Oh yeah, and here's your phone. That's right. You got all the pieces right. But this is so active, you know, it took five weeks to complete this game. And as you probably notice, yeah, it took about five weeks. You know what, five weeks to complete this game. Oh, and there's your ship, you have to... But this is, this is kind of short, but... You have to wait for your destination to come. If you missed it by one ship, you're, you're out of luck. Oh, and you don't have to wait here, but this is what happens. You have to wait for a few moments, and this is what happens. And there you go. And that ends the game. And there you go. That's that's that. That's pretty short, but it's not very good. I I can't believe. Yeah, a lot of people review this game in the past, but in the back when yeah he went yeah a lot of people review this game in the past because um, yeah this game is pretty bad and it's absolutely the worst game ever for the Atari VCS twenty six hundred if to be exact. And uh, they did a, didn't do good. I, I know a lot of this, according to Wikipedia, when it just talking about the Atari 2600 or this, the version of what ET for the Atari VCS, which I think it's uh, it's turned to be collectible. Yeah, it is a collector's item. If you if you cannot find this anymore, but you can find it online. It costs hundreds of dollars to get this, and this is according to history. And you know, it's a it's the gameplay. You know. It's, uh, it was a development, it was when they, yeah, the process first began in the July 1982, in the summer of 82, and it was completed before the end of the year. Yeah, the production costs were estimated to $125 million, which uh, actually followed the movie's success. It became a summer blockbuster movie of 82. Steve Ross, the, the, uh, the chief executive officer of, of, of Warner Communications, a.k.a. now Time Warner, started negotiations with Steven Spielberg and Universal to acquire the license to produce a video game based off the movie. And then in July, they announced, yeah, they announced uh, the rights for the game. Yeah, they tried to acquire the rights for the game. And, of course, uh, uh, Howard Scott Walshaw was involved with the project on, uh, in, back in late July of 82. They decided to develop the game. And then, of course, the idea. And then they just... They took five weeks to complete the game, and of course, by um, by around Christmas of 1982, the game was released. It was a marketing flop. It was it was a marketing disaster, and it's uh, it's it's very bad. And you know what? It it was a bad game. You know, they offered two hundred thousand dollars for an all expensive paid vacation. Of course, it what it took about a few weeks to, to complete the game. And this is this is even after the, the movie became more popular. The game was absolutely when they rushed into stores and people bought the game. And, of course, all of a sudden, the game is absolutely not as good. Of course, um, Atari decided that this is... Yeah, it's not working very well. I don't know why, because um, the problem with the game, it's it's not a very good idea. But if you want to play it, any, any, if, you, if you choose the, the first game variation, it featured uh, two of the bad guys they had to avoid. It was FBI agents or... The scientist. That's right. The scientist is where you put you in the in a jail cell or whatever it is. Or if you, you know you have to watch out for those FBI agents. If 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 the FBI agents is gonna get ET, they'll take away the pieces. 
and then you have to redo it again. And it's just, this is not very well done in in, the, in in this production, of course. Of it's uh, it's it took about six months. It yeah, you know how it's got Walshaw, the guy who involved with the project. You know he he also did well with Yars Revenge and of course Raiders and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I think is another worse game. I think Yars Revenge was a classic. I guess uh, that was for an Atari and. Um, and this is this is what happened. Around January eighty three, the game eventually sold one point five million units, became one of the best selling Atari titles. However, two point five or three point five million cartridges went unsold. Hubner and Kishner that the large number of produced cartridges have resulted in, in, in inventory regardless of ET success. It was it was a bestseller during the holiday season. It was slated that its figures did not meet expectations, of course. Warner also expressed uh, this point of the number of sales, of course, uh, lower than expected sales. You know, Al Nielsen, a uh, J.C. Penny employee, mentioned that his copy of the game was discounted five times from forty nine ninety five to less than a dollar. That's right, you have the less than a dollar if you had a quoting that. Yeah, three point five million of the four million produced sent back to the company as an unsold inventory is customers concerned despite the the figures and all the stuff yeah it's actually it would become a more it's a it's a very highly collectible game if you want to yeah the cartridge was still uncommon at price at very low amounts and and then this is what happens um of course uh, the the industry that happened by the end of 82 it has begun to lose dominance as more competitors enter the market and blah 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 yeah, $536 million loss for Atari, who reported, according to Atari. Of course, Warner sold Atari to another company, and I don't know why, so it's name only. I don't know. It was uh, it was pretty much like the way it does. It was a very disappointed loss, because it's a, it's a pretty bad game, and that's why E.T., the Atari 2600, was bad, as far as I'm concerned. And around night in, in, in September... Uh, probably around 1980 in 1983, uh, according to that, in New Mexico, a series of articles between 20 or uh, the, like truckloads of Atari boxes, cartridges, and systems from an Atari storehouse in El Paso were crushed, buried at the landfill within the city. It was Atari's first dealings with the landfill, which was chose because of scavenging was allowed, and its garbage was crushed and buried nightly. It was officials and others. Yeah, they, they sent it into the landfill. It's a pretty bad waste. It, it's in uh, it's in Almogordo, New Mexico. That's where the that's where the site is where the ET games were buried. That's like the yeah buried in there like a like a, a cemetery. And there's also uh, involved with that. And of course, to fix the game, you know, the. Um, it was a, it was a probably some of those issues. You know, there were problems in there, and uh, yeah, this is this is probably yeah. And, you know, the, this is just the worst, actually the worst game in in a, in the history of the existence. But I just tell you though, the game is not even as good. You know, the game was pretty bad. I don't know, E.T. was green, and yeah, Jedi. And, I mean, not Jedi. I uh, Jedi on EU79 did a review on this uh, on his video game stinkers video that he did he re he revisited et for the atari 2600 or vcs to be exact yeah he just just did a playthrough of a game and then i did finish the game and i know it's it's a horrible game and i can't stand it anymore this is this is absolutely the most worst thing I ever had and uh, i i just want to tell you all about it I, I know a lot of people reviewed this game in the in the past but uh, in the couple last few years, when uh, a lot of people reviewed the game, and I know it's it's uh, it's a very horrible game. It's one of the worst game in it out of the other games. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde was uh, was before that. It was prior to Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde on Nintendo, as well as Athena, out of other worst games in the 34 Days of Crappy Games, as even way before Action 52. Action 52 was also horrible than ET, and this was way before Big Rigs. Over the Road Racing did it because uh, this was 2003, 10 years after ET on the Atari 2600 just came out. That was 10 years after this game. It was Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. That's a pretty bad example, become the worst game ever made. 
And yeah, a lot of bad controls. It was an over the road racing because it was like an invisible truck. Why the truck didn't crash or anything? Yeah, it's 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 very bad. If you want to see big rigs over the road racing, go check out the uh, the uh, installment of the Angry Video Game Nerd where he talks about ranting about big rigs over the road racing. It's a it's a very bad game. I I, I cannot take them anymore. I never played big rigs, and I know. Yes, and I know this game E.T. was pretty bad. I would really want to see this game in the in the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Which, yes, that's the first movie that he's going to be in there. But, um, yeah, this movie's been there for about two years already. The project has been there for two years. I hope uh, I hope James Roth will do the best. He will do a great job. And I hope we'll look forward to see the movie. It's going to be coming out soon, of course. I would love to see E.T., Yep, this game is going to be appearing in the new AVGN movie, which is going to be coming out. And I hope, I, I will hope maybe soon after this is going to get done, I would love to see this movie. It was, it's supposed to be a great movie. I, I wish a lot of actors are going to be involved with this film. And uh, yeah, Howard Scott Walsh is also involved with this one. He was also in the movie. If you want to see the AVGN movie, you should, if you want to see the, the, the one behind the AVGN movie project, you should go check out Cinemassacre.com and uh, you'll give it a little in-depth look at the movie and the game that is also involved this one because this is absolutely a game I actually hated that much because I used to play this game as a kid. It brings back a lot of memories. And I just know this is absolutely absolutely not as good as what it was, but the game is not very well. It's, it's yeah. Yeah, E.T. Atari was was worse. I know it's the worst game ever made, and it was the la and it is going to be the last game in the 34 days of crappy games here on the four o'clock game special. And now to round this out, to to wrap up this game, let's get this game with the go animate and ground the game, and you'll be execute. Yep, the game is going to be executed forever, of course. And this is going to be a remake of an, a video that was actually Warren Cook gets executed video. That was uh, by another user. So I remade this video. So I'm going to go to go animate right now. And this is the way E.T. Atari 2600 gets grounded and executed. So now let's go there for one final look at go animate. So we'll be back for a wrap up after this video. E.T. Atari 2600, I'm glad you made this game. Did you do very well? No, I made this game and it sucks. <laughs> E.T. Atari 2600, how dare you make this game based off the movie which is my favorite film of all time? It has bad controls, god-awful intro music, terrible gameplay and it ends up being the worst Atari 2600 game of all time. That's it, you're grounded 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 for super duper dream tranquility and for this, we're going to court. No 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 I don't want to go go to court. Too bad. Get in the car. We are going to court. E.T. Atari 2600, get in the car right now. No. Get in the car now. Order in the court. Ronald McDonald and David vs. E.T. Atari 2600. How do you plead? I plead that I made a video game based off of a movie. And it took five weeks to complete and released it around Christmas 1982 and it became a huge flop. Howard Scott Warshaw was the guy who made this game. And it became one of the biggest commercial failures in video gaming history. Steve Frost, chief executive officer of Atari's parent company, Warner Communications, the company that made Warner Home Video like you've seen on every VHS openings, started negotiations with Steven Spielberg and Universal to acquire the gaming rights to produce this game. After the game's release, it did poorly. That's the story on how E.T. video game failed. I've heard that yesterday. How do you plead Ronald McDonald? I plead that Atari made a horrible game based off the movie E.T. which is my favorite movie of 1982. 
Howard Scott Warshaw made this game and it was a commercial bomb. I agree with Fanboy. Okay, I demand E.T. Atari 2600. Guilty. No 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 You will be sentenced to death. Oh god. Breaking news. Welcome to a special happy hour news report. Today's report is about the worst video game of all time, E.T. for the Atari 2600. He is facing execution. The game had bad controls and terrible gameplay making it the worst Atari 2600 game ever. It was developed by Howard Scott Warshaw, the guy who created Lars Revenge, the best Atari game ever made. Warshaw took five weeks to make E.T. and it was complete disaster. E.T. was such a commercial flop. It entered the video game crash of 1983. Officer Morris Baldwin is going to prepare it for execution. I would like to see him find that chair. There are people outside cheering for his upcoming execution. Hey, he's all set to die. We now go to two people he know e I'm so glad that E.T. for the Atari 2600 is finally gonna die. It's the worst Atari game ever made. Me and my friends including game developer Howard Scott Warshaw are going to throw a party on E.T.'s death. We will return to the aftermath of E.T.'s Atari 2600's execution. This is your shelter with no bed, no toilet, no air conditioner, no sink. You will stay until it's time for execution. Goodbye forever. E.T. Atari 2600, you have a visitor who wants to see you. E.T. Atari 2600, I heard that you're going to execute it. That's it. You're grounded forever. Takashi, I'm sorry. Can you please let me out and I promise I will never make another Atari 2600 game ever again. No. I also hope you will suffer in jail and burn in hell. Goodbye forever. This is going to be a torture. Okay, ET Atari 2600, execution time. Sit down. He's dead. E. T. Atari 2600 has finally now executed. He was executed for making one of the worst video game of all time for the Atari 2600. Are there any questions? What will happen to this game? This game will be buried in a landfill in Alamogordo, New Mexico. That is it for now. Join us next time for Happy Hour News. Well, I, w I just want to say this to the game. This game sucks. E.T. for the Atari 2600 is, to my conclusion, this has got to be the worst game ever made. And you probably know, um, right after the game didn't sell well, well, hundreds of copies of this game has flown into the New Mexico, New Mexico desert. It was in, near the desert in New Mexico. That's where all the copies of E.T. has been, yeah, it's been turned into some sort of a, a yep, a, a, a landfill. That's right. It's got a landfill of, that's where the home of where the uh, the New Mexico landfill was took place, where all the cartridges of E.T. has stuck into the landfill, and it's so dreadful because it's, yeah, they, they just try to use it as pavement or use it as a thing, and yep, it can be found in the Mexican landfill. It's just so bad. And there were a lot of copies exist in there because there were a lot of collectibles. And yep, this ends up being a collectible, but it actually it's not even worth playing. So uh, whatever you do, don't play E.T. for the Atari, but it's not very fun. 
And why is the ET graphics so green in there? But I noticed at the end of the game, after I finished completing this game, um, and yep, it said the mother ship back there, and then you get earn your points, and then Elliot walks around back and forth, back and forth, back and forth throughout the whole thing, and after you finally complete it. And yes, I did the third level. I did the third thing. The third game variation might be, it's a, yeah, it's the third one. I think I choose game number three a lot better because it doesn't have, due to the absence of the FBI agents and the scientists. See, the first, the first one, I, I, yeah, has the same exact game that you had to avoid the, um, the FBI agents and the scientists. You have to avoid. But, uh, yeah, the FBI agents is where you can take away your phone. The pieces from the phone. Whatever. And, of course, after you do is collect Reese's Pieces and, um, what they call green dots. That has uh, what they call Reese's Pieces. After you collect nine, and you can signal to Elliot. And then you give you the phone. That's the whole thing. And that's, that's kind of easy. And then after that, it, it, you have to send the mother ship. And then what happens, you have to go back. You have to wait for the mothership, and then you go home, and then you, and then you beat the game. This is kind of short. It's not even that great because ET was pretty stupid for Atari. Because I just want to say it's it stinks. And thank goodness, according to what Go Animate would say in the, in one of his video in the clip, yep, ET has been executed. E.T. for the Atari VCS has now been executed. And, of course, it's sent into the landfill. But in the, in the, in New Albert Dirtle, New Mexico. And uh, there you go. That's that's my story about this game for E.T. for the Atari VCS. Slash 2600. And I'm officially done. And after all the 34 games I've been played throughout the 4 o'clock games, 34 days of crappy games, this one, E.T., would be my last entry into the 4 o'clock games, 34 days of crappy games. You know what? I'm officially done with E.T. And I'm, I'm officially done with these terrible games. And, yep, the, all 34 games have, have been grounded. You know, according to what GoAnimate would say this, and this is how we do in every... Go animate clips when I put it in there, and I th I want to show you to tell you all about this these games. Yep, all 34 horrible games are grounded forever, for life, and even in triple tranquility. And I just think the um, 34 games is just bad. So, and that we're coming to an end. And yep, the 34 days of crappy games have finally finished. Wow, I'm officially done this game because it's so bad you know what I'm not going to play another bad game ever again because after 34 days of horribly games because it has terrible games and all the stuff I took time and effort I started making videos of this I started making this one since early March I began making them I began filming it in March I started doing games since mid-March and into April and I started doing all the Go Animate stuff since then. And of course, I completed the game since May. And of course, I just tried to do some editing and the whole thing using iMovie. And of course, I just finished up. It took three months to complete. And that said, that, that has been said and done. Yep, ET game is just so bad and, it's, and it sucks. So whatever you're going to do, just don't play this game at all, like I said. And uh, there you go, and that's E.T., and I have to say this for the bottom, for the final time, after all the 34 days I've been playing. Yeah, I apologize for the screaming and the yelling when I did, in other episodes when I did, and I just had to say this is not very fond of, but uh, I apologize for the screaming and the yelling throughout the gameplay, and I know I've been frustrated by playing X-Men, yeah, Spider-Man x men in Arcade Revenge, I was frustrated with Treasure Master, and I always got a little yelling and upset over this game because after you landed on a spike, gives you instant death. Yeah, I, I just try. I, I decided to stop yelling and, and screaming, so I apologize for them for not uh, trying to avoid the users from being bullied. But I hope um, 
I hope uh, I don't want to do that in the, in the very near future when I'm doing my videos. So I might do this like maybe every year or whatever when I do my 34 Days of Grabbing Games episode. Because with all the frustration and all the stuff. And that's it. That's all there is to say about it because... Yep, E.T. is just so bad. So, And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the 4 o'clock games, 34 days of crappy games. And now it's been coming to an end. 34 days, I'm tired of all the games that I played and I hated these all 34 games. And I cannot believe this. This is not very fond of and I hope by maybe next year... When I do another 30, 40 days of crappy games, if there's going to be a next year or something, I will play other horrible games. And these are all games that I just stink at games like this. And of course, as in addition to that, tonight is, yep, tonight is the 4th of July. And uh, if you all, if, yeah, as you probably know it, today is July 4th. It's the 4th of July. Now we're just going to go outside and enjoy the fireworks. Well, we're going to have a picnic, we're going to have a barbecue, and all this kind of things. And I, all you got to do is, whatever you're watching, drive carefully tonight if you want to go outside and see the fireworks. And if you remember, if you are, if you are, if you are going out to, to the fireworks show to see it tonight, or you want to see the Macy's 4th of July fireworks, or if you see every fireworks show when it comes in tonight, just remember, if, like I said, drive carefully whenever you want to do this, because this is how gets involved so just to have a party and it's time to have a little barbecue and uh trying to fire up this barbecue and we're going out tonight and hopefully i will be joining us here because this is this is the best time i'm, I'm going to be celebrating the fourth of july and i hope you all enjoy this as well so i'm going on behalf of the four o'clock game me this is chris the good guy and i will be seeing you soon and i'm and now my 4 o'clock games, 34 days of crappy games, is finally done. So I will be seeing you again next year. And we're going to be doing another crappy game. And this is going to be it. I will go back to the normal 4 o'clock game as soon as it, when it comes in next time. So probably very soon, I will be going back to my normal self. So we'll back to work. Back to do more of these stuff. Probably... And I will play more crappy games next year. And I will be back soon. And I hope everybody will be joining us again. Probably maybe very soon. So I hope you will enjoy it. Looking forward to it. So we'll be back in the normal 4 o'clock game soon. As we play more of your favorite games. On the 4 o'clock game. And this is Chris the Good Guy. And I will say happy 4th of July one and all. And have a happy and safe Independence Day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon. Take care, and bye for now.